As for their own civilians killed and displaced in Gaza, they seem to sort of shrug. And why shouldn't they when the rest of the world seems to prefer blaming Israel for the humanitarian crisis in Gaza? With the civilians fleeing, the ongoing conflict there, suffering from a lack of food, water, medicine, fuel, while their leaders are safely ensconced in luxury hotels and villas in countries like Turkey and Qatar. They're literally traveling on private jets with their families and with personal net worths in the billions, billions of dollars. Hamas's secret investment portfolio alone is estimated to be worth almost a billion dollars with money tied up in construction and real estate companies in countries like Sudan, Algeria, Qatar, Turkey, the UAE, and others. And none of that appears to go to the civilians of Gaza for the necessities they need and the rest of the world is talking about. Not only are the Gazans being used by Hamas as physical human shields against the ongoing ground war, but also as economic pawns. It turns out terrorism can be a lucrative business. So where does all the funding for Hamas's lavish lifestyles and wide-ranging advancements come from? Well, money that supports largesse among Hamas elite, but no doubt fuels its terror too. We know part of the answer. Much of it is from money laundered from foreign donations and humanitarian aid that was meant to go to building up civilian, uh, the civilian infrastructure. A so-called golden safety net for the Hamas leadership and their families built on the backs of Palestinian civilians. Certainly Iran has a lot to do with it, but it's far from the only source. We know that Iran is a major funder of groups like Hamas and other proxies in the region. We hit a number of financial facilitators that were located throughout the Gulf and in Turkey, and we recognize that Hamas and many of these groups are funded by uh, facilitators, um, cryptocurrency, uh, traditional financial channels. And I want to be clear that we're, the truth is that for many of these groups, they are laundering money the old-fashioned way. And that's why we have to stay ever vigilant throughout the financial system. In other words, they're hiding in plain sight, supported by supposed U.S. allies like NATO member Turkey, laundering money through what are supposed to be legitimate global financial systems. Joining me now is Hans Jacob Schindler, counterterrorism finances expert, who is senior director at the Counter Extremism Project. He's been tracking Hamas and terrorism financial issues for over 25 years. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right. So to dig a little deeper for us in terms of exactly where are they getting this money to, to start from? Thank you so much for having me on. Unfortunately, as with any major terrorist organization, Hamas over the years has made sure that it has several overlapping income streams so that if you pressure one of them, it can substitute it with others. So the biggest pots really are until about the beginning of October, anything that went on in Gaza, so any economic activity, but also taxes and levies on any aid money that came into uh, Gaza. This is unfortunately a sad truth. Secondly, strategically, Qatar. 30 million per month were the official sum that they admitted. Very likely much more than that went from Qatar, in part from the Qatari government, but also from Qatari donors, directly into the Hamas coffers. Uh, Iran has already been mentioned, material support within weapons, arms, ammunition, trainings, but also money. And then we have the investment portfolio. Unfortunately, Hamas is not yet classified as a terror organization in many countries of the world. Right. So they can skeet around jurisdictions that don't have counterterrorism financing laws against them and establish companies in part with sanctioned, U.S. sanctioned Hamas members on the board or as CEOs of, of companies that brought in revolving amounts of money. And then lastly, um, sympathizers and supporters, both in Europe as well as in America, but also around the world, who simply set up charitable or ostensibly charitable organizations and collected money that didn't go for any charitable causes, but went straight to Hamas. So uh, can the U.S. do anything about it? I mean, we talk about crackdowns, right? But it sounds to me like what you're saying is they've got enough, enough other avenues in other countries that it's going to be tough for the U.S. to do much. No, it's a question of focus, right? So obviously, uh, the focus in the last couple of years was on al-Qaeda, on the Islamic State, 
on Iran, on Russia sanctions. Uh, these were the big ticket issues were investigative and sanctions energy, both in the US as well as in uh, Europe went to. But if there is a concerned effort now to tackle these financial structures of Hamas, there is much that can be done, starting with putting pressure on countries such as Iran or Qatar or Turkey that either directly mm. fund Hamas or let Hamas operate on their territories to generate funding. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.